So it was little things all the time I've got to learn. SOT, sound on tape. You have to go along and record all the little background noises, doors opening, doors shutting, fridges opening, light switches going on, snibs, sinks, running, all the random stuff, car doors opening, car doors running, sound on tape. Um, there's something I've never ever thought of. There's so much to it. I just keep trying until I die. <laughs> it's all right. Let's have a cup of coffee here. On the, on the boardwalk, I call it the boardwalk because I don't know any other name for it on the uh, promenade along the side of the river here. That's a public space that's uh, concrete, it's lined by flowers and houses. Oh, sorry, backs of houses, little houses, you'll see it, you'll see it in the video. Uh, all with flowers and things, people really look after it. And you can drop down the river, it's very tidal up and down, or oh, I don't know, two metres, say. So, um, the river's up and down, people come and go fishing here for prawns, big prawns. With their legs, the prawns would be 15 inches to 20 inches long. That's, yeah, half of that, their front claws. Um, but people are here in the evening now, it's four o'clock-ish. There's uh, some older people, I don't know, 50, 50 years old, walking up and down, obviously exercising. There's younger people jogging up and down, uh, no teenagers here I don't think, it's just a public space where people come in to relax and get away from it and you've got the cool cool breeze blowing across the river which is uh, very pleasant on a hot day because you only go two blocks away, it's the central bank car, the old city, the central where all the uh, song towers and that pull up and um, from the main street back to the river is a very very old quarter of the town by the building, centre of marketing, selling all sorts of uh, three-storey shops selling farmer stuff, fish, fishing stuff, not the western version of fishing stuff, Thai version of fishing stuff like shrimp nets and uh, ropes and uh, gaffs and stuff for the fishermen who live in the river here. And then there's a food market in the morning here, a big food market. The afternoon food market is out the road a little bit, not far away, about a mile, kilometre. Yeah, and this is this beautiful little place, bloody beautiful. Okay, it's not the beach. We haven't got the sea breeze. It's not the mountains like Chiang Mai. We haven't got the changes in the evening coolness. I can remember being at Chiang Mai in the morning one day and having to shut the door because the breeze coming in was too cold. That's not going to happen here at Bangkok. I went on the Mekong, La Prabang, to um, some town, Chiang, anyway, up on the border back into Thailand. And we stopped at a place halfway up the Mekong River, which I can't remember the name, it's an overnight stop. Everybody stops there. Guess what? I got on the boat in the morning. Everybody's got padded jackets and woolly, you know, fur lined jackets and things. I've only got a shirt, a thin cotton shirt, exactly what I got now. That's all I brought. It was 15 degrees. And then you start heading up the river with a cold air blowing on you. I was freezing. I had to get my luggage and put a couple of extra of these, these things on and hide behind the bulkhead on the boat and all the local people are sort of laughing at me, laughing at me but with me. They don't laugh at you in a bad way, they laugh, with, laugh at you and with you. But uh, yeah, well, it, was a, it was a bad judgement of error. I wasn't going to die but it was very uncomfortably cold. It can get cold in Thailand. Anyway, but not down around here, this is close to the ocean, close to Bangkok. I don't think it ever gets cold here. But you can hop on the train from here, you can hop on a bus from here and go to Pattaya. You can go on the train from here into Bangkok and down the peninsula and then you've got to get a bus across to Phuket. You can go to Phuket, you can go to all the islands. No worries from here, public transport, easy, affordable. If you want to sit by the beach, if you want to sit in a, in a, in a banana lounge on the beach at Pattaya, and have someone bring you a couple of cold beers and just chill. Uh, someone will bring you some food. It's really good if you've got Thai people with you because they'll just say something and all of a sudden a plate of food will turn up on the beach at an affordable price. Tourist prices because it's at Pattaya, yes, but still affordable. The food here at Bangkok is very, very, very affordable. 50 baht will get you pad thai, stuff like that, you know. 50 baht is the basic price for a uh, meal, rice and sliced chicken and some vegetables, noodles, 30 baht to 50 baht for noodles. You go into Bangkok, and I was in Bangkok a couple of years ago, after being up at Udon, Udon Tanai and uh, Chiang Mai, and uh, I went to Bangkok to visit somebody, to meet up with somebody, and I was paying 250, 300 bahts for a little bowl of pad thai. Up around Udon in the country, it's 50 bahts. 
but hey, you're in a big city, you've got to pay. That's just the way it is. Pop on my little deadly treadly and go home to my house under the air conditioner. Uh, it's tea time, it's half past, it's half past four now. That's the evening meal time when people eat. Difference to Australia, Thai people eat before it gets dark. In Australia, I grew up working class person in the country. You never ate until after dark because you were working as a farmer or if you were a worker on wages, you'd go home to your house, knock off at five, it used to be in the old days. Go home to your house and you do stuff in your yard and around your house, house improvements, jobs that needed to be done until it was dark. And then you went inside, I guess you got electric lights, you went inside and the wife, like I say, stereotypical in the old days, the wife, the mother, would have your meal cooked and then you'd eat it and you listen to the radio back in the old days because you didn't have telly. When I was a kid, I grew up not all my childhood life, but for a fair part of my childhood life, I grew up without the telly. If you wanted to watch the telly, you had to be friends with a rich kid that lived up the street and go and watch his telly for a bit. And it was black and white and fuzzy and full of snow. <laughs> but we loved, it. we loved it. But I can remember sitting in the lounge room at my house, um, and we all sit around a big old bell radio, and we listen to Dad and Dave. Now, I look back now and say, oh my God, how old are you, you know? But there was no telly. You'd listen to radio, um, the Argonauts it used to be, it was a young person's show. Uh, they didn't, there wasn't any music. I, don't, I think the 3BA, which is the Ballarat radio station, used to play music during the day. But it would be um, corny old songs like the one-eyed purple people eater and some Frank Sinatra and some Hey, Mr. Telly Man, Telly My Banana, that sort of stuff, crazy. Oh, not crazy, but old, old music. And then the Beatles come along and they changed it for the young people. Um, you wouldn't hear it on the radio, but the Beatles, you started hearing the radio. But people like uh, Jimi Hendrix were around then. You never heard that unless you were way out there on the edge of the culture, the modern culture. Um, I remember going out when I was 17, 16, and somebody had drawn a picture of Jimi Hendrix with his frizzy hair on the back of a roller blind with a toothbrush, a toothpaste, bloody good job too. And I can remember the, 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 the picture, the image, and somebody said, oh, I was Jimi Hendrix, but I never, listen, I never listened to Jimi Hendrix music until I was, I never really got into it until I was about 25 or 30. Absolutely love it. But for some reason, I seem to miss all that stuff. Anyway, I'm getting way over here. Yeah, we'll go home. I'm going home back to my place. The Thai people start at about five o'clock, four o'clock. You've got to go to the market and buy your food. Go home and cook it, or you go and buy it, go out to a restaurant. Which sounds flash, but a restaurant just means that you eat somewhere else. It's still, you know, 50 baht, they plate the food. Um, and you can have two or three plates if you want of different types of food. The Thai thing is, everybody buys a plate and you get a big, big barbecued fish goes in the middle of the table, some rice goes in the middle of the table, some, uh, Prawns go in the middle of the table, some um, other little mixtures of pork and chicken and salad go in the middle of the table, and everybody shares it. That's, that's the way the Thai people eat. It's fantastic. I'm used to it now. It was one thing I wasn't quite used to, and I've gotten, I have got used to that now, was the soup bowls. If you were with a Thai close family group, the soup bowl on the table, which will have a little light under it burning away to keep it warm, you know. Uh, but it's communal soup, and you just sort of dip your spoon in and have a mouthful, and you know, second dips, third dips, there's none of that sort of, uh, don't use your dirty spoon or spoon your mouth back into the soup, it's none of that sort of stuff, it's a communal soup and everybody. Or you can get a ladle, there's a ladle there, you can dish some into your little plate if you want, you can do it both ways, but families don't worry too much about that. Oh, you've licked it, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I don't worry about that too much. Um, but I'm used to that now. I was up hunting up the bush when I first went up there, something I never got used to, well, I sort of I got used to it, was uh, it'd be a big stew pot in the middle of a fire, uh, a big pot of uh, you know, stew or something like that, and you'd, you'd go and get a plateful, and if you didn't eat it all, what was left you'd put back into the pot. Um, I sort of that grated a bit with me, 
I know that there is technically there is technically no reason not to do it. Um, it is a probably a proper thing to do, not to waste food. Uh, but I was I found it a little bit hard to get used to. That didn't worry me, but it just sort of uh, sorry. It did worry me a little bit, but I uh, I didn't say I'm not going to eat that stew. I just ate it and uh, got over that. Yeah, that was interesting. That was up in the bush hunting, way back from hunting with hounds back in the days. This is a ramble, this video, this is a rambling one. So we'll go back, I've got some pork in the fridge that I bought yesterday. Go up to the market yesterday evening, just buy a big steak of pork. I'm on a keto diet so I like the pork with a big piece of fat on the, on the, um, on the edge of it. It's a big piece of fat and then the skin. So I buy a big steak of pork. 100 bahts. I've got that in the fridge. I'll cook that up in a fry pan. I'll get mortar and pestle and pound up some garlic. One chilli maybe, pound up a chilli and some garlic. Put it in a pan. Cook it all up in the pan with a bit of butter. And then uh, a little Vita, who's... Well, I was going to say she's not used to Western flung food. She loves Western flung food, as in like McDonald's and KFC and all the stuff you buy at 7-Eleven, biscuits and lollies. She loves it, no worries about that. But um, as far as cooking food, she absolutely loves this pork. I cook, she hops into it. She reckons it's good, a bit of salt pork. And uh, she loves it. Uh, and I cut it into pieces about the size of uh, one and a half matchboxes and cook it like that. And then Tacky went, my, my lady Tack, Went and got a piece, uh, got a meal for me the other night. So I brought it out and she sliced it all uh, to the thickness of um, a thin cigarette, I'd say, you know, HB pencil. Cut it thin like that on the plate called meal salad. And, uh, and presented it to me like that. And it's absolutely beautiful like that. I'm not used to having my food cut up and presented to me. But I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've got to go and waffle on again. Okay, we could probably run out of batteries soon. No, I'm not. Just run out of things to talk about. Catch us.